Hi, welcome to Elite Swiftwater Institute's Tips and Tricks. I'm Adam Robbins, instructor for the Elite Swiftwater Institute. Today we're going to talk about natural anchors. We're going to talk about rocks and trees as anchoring options for rope systems. One of the things you're looking for when you're trying to create a rope system is you're looking for a bomb-proof anchor. An anchor that would never move with the amount of tension that you're going to apply to your rope system. So, when we start thinking about the construction of our anchors, we want to look when we're talking about trees, we'll start with trees, we're looking at the root ball to begin with. We want to see where, how strong the structure of the bottom of the tree is. Some things that you're going to be concerned about with moving water incidents is, is the root ball washed away? Is it solid and, and have a good bite on good solid ground? This root ball here obviously is not in that great shape. It's been washed away, it's been eroded, and the tree itself is dead. Another thing we're looking for is a nice, strong, healthy tree. This tree here, that's a pretty good anchor. I would call that a bomb-proof anchor. It's a big, fat tree with a good root system, and it'll accept a rope really well, not a lot of odd shapes or sharp edges. And it'd be great for setting up a system on, in my opinion. Now we're going to move on and looking at some irregular-shaped anchors, looking at some rocks. Rocks are often irregular shaped and some, can sometimes have some pretty sharp edges on them that you have to deal with. And the, way, the way that you would deal with a sharp edge, say I wanted to sling this rock here and it's got this nice big sharp horn at the top that I want to protect my soft, prote or my soft material from that I'm going to create my anchor out of. So in this case, I'm going to use my webbing flip strap from around my waist. If I was just to use that without any padding on it, it could cut through it, especially when it's tension. So, I don't like to take my PFD off unless I have to. In this case, I've got a pair of shorts protecting my dry suit. So, I'm going to use this for padding in this situation. So, let's take my soft material, whatever it is, shorts, dry bag, PFD if you've got an extra one or if you're not going to be back in the water and kind of lay that out and pad your edge really well. Another thing that you're going to want to think about when we're talking about rocks as anchors is what's the rock sitting on? This rock's sitting on a nice base, but it could be sitting on some smaller rocks, and that creates sort of a ball bearing effect. So when you go to tension, apply tension to your system, it could possibly move and roll down the bank if it's not sitting on solid ground. Another thing we see a lot of times with large flat rocks, especially when they're sitting on top of another rock, is uh, the teeter-totter, seesaw effect. So if I was to create my anchor, while the rock looked like that, there was pressure applied to the other side, your anchor could be lost. Okay, So you want to watch out for any rocks that can move around when you walk around the top of them. So that's a quick overview of natural anchors. Remember when you're dealing with rocks that you want to make sure you pat them, that they're not going to move, and that you got created a bomb-proof anchor that's going to be way stronger than the tension you're going to apply to your system.